previously on Historical Geocaching. My wife and I are exploring the reconstructed fort at Jamestown Settlement, a living history museum in Southeast Virginia. Most recently, we toured the governor's house and church. Clothing. So as you can see, this is an apron that's been burnt, which is a tragic loss, but it allows me to represent one of my jobs here. So because we're not really going to be making much in the way of equipment here, we're not going to be, you know, making anything here, we're bringing it over. Then my job primarily as a woman is going to be embroidery, fixing clothes, and cleaning clothes. So our laundry operation is usually right behind me, but for right now, I'm just going to essentially rehem it. Just cut off the burned bit right there, and then make a new hem down at the bottom, and then I might actually do some embroidery down at the bottom as well, and then it'll be wearable again. Cool. This is my favorite apron. You can see actually this one was hand stitched, which makes it my favorite personally. <laughs> and then I'm sure my friend already gave you the whole rundown on, you know, not yet. And all that. Really? Not yet. Well, in that case, allow me. So what well, I have represented over here is basically going to be standard daily rations. So every man is promised a full loaf of bread, about one pound, made of course in a clay oven like this one right here. And then you also get a quarter pound of meat. So here we have fish that would be relatively easy to get from the James River. And then also salt pork, which would just I be sent I both of those are salted for preservation. Yeah, exactly. So that's just going to be the main way that the English are going to be preserving their food. Of course, no refrigerators, and the power tent are going to be the ones doing the smoking. So when the English first arrive here, they haven't really picked up the smoking tactics yet. And then back in, like for example, Germany, they would be drying sausages, stuff like that. But this is Virginia, and yeah, it's too humid here to be doing any kind of drying. So salting is going to be your only option. And then we also have, of course, dry stuff that preserves easily, like beans, lentils, and then corn that you actually trade with the natives to get. Yep. And these are just standard fare. You know, not that interesting, but our modern taste is probably healthier. <laughs> I know, it's also oyster shells. Yeah, because those are going to be plentiful in the James River. They record them being the size of dinner plates, which is probably oh. an exaggeration, but <laughs> that would make them as big as the plate they're sitting on right now. So those are old oysters. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely crazy to think about. And then they record fish being as easy to catch as just dipping a frying pan in the water and pulling one up. Yeah, which is insane. And we know that that's true to some extent because the English aren't very good at fishing, just because pretty much everything in the Thames has been killed at this point. And I mean, same for modern day. And so hunting is going to be a gentleman's sport. They're not really familiar with it. Yeah. And yet they still manage to. Hmm. How are you? Doing Very well. well. Yourself? Doing well. Doing well. Wonderful. What you just come into here is the hall of this building. This is sort of a general purpose room area, right? Behind you is one of the bedrooms in the building. There's another one upstairs, two more over on this end of the building. And then uh, the central area here where all those men would be able to use the space for eating or for recreation, whatever. So kind of like barracks. Exactly, kind of very much like barracks. The, um, the men coming to Jamestown in the early 1600s are pretty much all soldiers working for the Virginia Company. Speaking of work, I expect I to get back to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just going to step over here. I've been working on a project on my spring pole weave. And uh, 
get near to finish with it. And a wider strap is going to do that. So this will get affixed to the pole and to the treadle down underneath. Wrap around there like this, and all that treadling, okay. because there's so much more surface area pressing on this, it bears around more smartly. So is this one of the earliest sewing machines? This or? is actually a, a machine called a spring pole blade. Okay. It's for turning wood. Uh, and so with this one, basically what we've got is our two puppets, which are these wooden pieces. And they're adjustable for different lengths of stop. Each puppet has a center running into it, a, a metal point. Now, this one is just fixed. This one is adjustable. And that allows me to accommodate different uh, sizes of material and also to adjust the tension as I go. So you'll have your piece of wood mounted in there. You work the treadle and that spins the piece of wood back and forth. As the wood is spinning, I can hold a sharp tool against it and cut it. To produce whatever it is that I'm making. So, uh, bowls, cups, pulleys for ships, handles for tools. There are, are certain tools and things that are made on the lathe. Um, as I'm cutting along here, removing a uh, little bit of the, the wood, pretty much the last step will be for me to take some of these fresh shavings that you see on the ground and burnish the piece of wood. I'm going to polish it. finish on here. Nice and smooth. Now I'm going to take my handful of shavings, put them on here. Don't hit your head. <laughs> and just start smoothing it out with burnishing the, the, the piece with it. Rubbing that in there and it's going to improve the finish. It makes it a little shinier. It makes it a little smoother and it helps to compress the fibers of the wood which helps to reduce wear.